This tutorial is about the processing of tricolor narrowband data using the Hubble color palette. The Hubble palette maps O3 data to blue, hydrogen alpha data to green, and S2 data to red in order of increasing wavelength. You have to do something because both of the hydrogen alpha and sulfur data are red, so you have to separate them somehow. That's the way they're mapped. And I just would like to point out before we get too far into the tutorial that if you just have HA and O3 data, that's a great data set for objects like the Veil supernova remnants or the Dumbbell planetary nebula where you can duplicate the O3 data and assign one of those to green and the other O3 data to blue and keep HA to red and you'll get a very natural looking color but you'll have all the high contrast that the narrowband filters provide to you. But for this tutorial we're going to go with tricolor narrowband imaging of all three emission lines. And we're going to do this using the clipping layer mask method in Photoshop where HA, S2, or O3 is changed into the screen blending mode. The screen blending mode acts like three independent projectors, one projecting blue, one projecting green, one projecting red, to get a color composite. Each one of those has a hue saturation layer mask. Each layer mask is clipped only to the narrow band layer immediately below it, which means if you change the hue or you change the intensity, you're only going to be affecting that particular data, like the HA data or the S2 data. And what's nice about this procedure is that you can change these parameters for each narrow band set of data independently at any time in the process. Whereas if you use one of the conventional programs where you assign each one of these emission line data to one color, red, green, and blue, and blend them to get a color that you like and then create an RGB color image. At that point you're stuck. You cannot go back. So this way allows you to change all of these color parameters for each HA, S2, and O3 at any time in the process. And you can add other clipping layer masks. For example, you can add curves on top of the hue saturation color mask for S2 and boost up the red in the faint areas. We're going to use our three masters from Malat 15 in IC 1875. There are the three masters of HA, O3, S2, these are all 3 nanometer data taken on a 16 inch RC telescope. You'll form one file that has HA on the bottom, O3 on top of that, and S2 on top of that. We're looking at the S2 data here. Then you're going to click this button, which is the adjustment layer. You're going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer for the sulfur data. And it looks like that. You will click colorize. You will change the hue to red since we're mapping S2 to red, saturation to 100%, and lightness to somewhere around minus 50, and click OK. Then you're going to right click on this new adjustment layer because we're going to clip it just to the S2 by saying create or clicking on create clipping mask. Once that's done, you'll see this little down arrow here to the left of the icon. That means that this layer is clipped to the sulfur. The only thing we have to do now is select the sulfur layer like we talked about before and change its blending mode to the screen blending mode. And when you do that, you end up with the sulfur data looking like this. This is going to be our red color channel. Now you're going to repeat this for the O3 data. So we're going to turn off the S2. We're going to select the O3. We're going to click the button again and create a hue saturation layer. We're going to change the hue to somewhere between 230 and 240. Saturation to 100%. Again, lightness back down to about minus 50. Click OK. And then we right click on that, create the clipping layer mask where we get the little down arrow here and change the O3 blending mode to screen. And we have our blue data. So what we do next is we turn off that blue data and what we're left with is the HA data on the bottom of all these layers. We're going to repeat the same process there. We're going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. We're going to colorize. We're mapping hydrogen alpha to green about 120, saturation 100%. And since H alpha typically is stronger than the other emission lines, in this case I've taken the lightness down to about minus 60. So it's going to be less bright in terms of its contribution than the other two emission lines, O3 and S2. Click OK. Right click to create the clipping layer mask, change the HA to the screen blending mode, and now we're ready to turn the other layers on. So with the HA on, we click here, 
which will turn both of these layers on since this is clipped. Now we have a mixture of HA, which is green, and O3, which is blue. Doesn't quite look good enough yet because we're missing the red S2 data, and we turn the red on. Now we have all the data there, and we're seeing the more classical Hubble palette narrowband color image where you have blue in the background, and you have these beautiful brown-amber colors surrounding the blue. And at this point, you can go in and adjust all of these parameters to get the color that you want. You can double-click on the hue saturation adjustment layer for S2, and you can change the lightness from, let's say, minus 51 to 42. 42 here. You can brighten up or make the red contribution even stronger. You can also add other adjustment layers, for example, curves. Let's say we want to bring up the curves just in certain brightness areas for the sulfur data. So you select the sulfur data, you go into curves, and you brighten this portion of the curve. Notice that it's created a curves adjustment layer here above the S2. And since it knows that there's a clipping layer there, it's going to create a curves clipping layer. You don't have to do that additionally for this curves data. And you can make the amber shock fronts even stronger in red if you do it this way. Same thing is true with, uh, let's say, the green. Sometimes green dominates some areas. So you can go in there, and let's say in the fainter areas out here, you want to de-emphasize green, but you might want to boost it up in the center area where there's more of a balance. So this is what we started with here. It's a bit green. After we apply the curve where we bring the curve down here, you can see it's a little bit darker. So you can do all of these things. If you don't like that effect, you can just simply click the eyeball here, but leave the layer there in case you change your mind, and you go back to what you had before. So there's tremendous flexibility here. So once you've done all those adjustments and you're happy with it, you're going to want to save this as a Photoshop PSD file with all of those layers in 16-bit and at least 300 dpi. You'll save that as a PSD file in case you have to go back and change the color. Then what you can do is you can duplicate that file, hit Control, Shift, and E to flatten the image, and then you can save that as a 16-bit TIFF file, which you can use later for, let's say, sharpening the data or adding another layer on top of it to change those narrowband stars, which are relatively colorless, to RGB stars.